Welcome to this Unity series on creating a nice, reliable little platformer controller, which can handle slopes, moving platforms, and uh, is just generally quite trustworthy. So uh, just to give a very rough overview of how this whole system is going to work, uh, there's basically two scripts, the player script, which is responsible for receiving input. So say you're moving uh, five units to the right, and due to gravity, you're falling seven units down. Uh, it then takes that velocity vector and sends it to the other script, which is the controller script. And then the controller script's task is to move the player, but obviously constraining it to collisions, which it does by firing out rays first horizontally and uh, then vertically in the direction that the player is moving. So obviously it gets a bit more complicated than that once we start dealing with slopes and all of those sorts of things. But that's really the simple idea at the heart of the controller. Now, another detail I'd like to quickly mention is that, as you can see, the rays aren't actually being fired from the exact edge of the player's uh, bounds, but rather from a small width inside of them, uh, which we refer to as the skin width. And the reason for this is so that when the player is, say, resting flush on the ground, we still have a small amount of space within which we can effectively fire the rays. A final point I'd like to bring up, just for anyone who's wondering, why we bother with all of this raycast stuff when we could just use a uh, rigid body to handle all of the collision detection for us. Um, it's been my experience in the past that the raycast controller handles slopes and moving platforms far more consistently than the rigid body, and also that it gives one sort of far greater fine-tuned control over the player movement. So, with all of that said, let us begin programming. All right, so in Unity, I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to set it to 2D, uh, which just changes some of the default settings. And I'm just going to find a good place to store it and call it Platformer Episode 1. All right. So now, uh, first thing I want to do is just change this camera color. I've never liked this shade of blue for whatever reason. And let's create a folder called Scripts. And inside of here, we're going to create our two c -sharp scripts. As I said, we've got our player for the input, and the other one is the 2D controller. So I'll call it controller2D, since we uh, can't start a script name with a number. All right, with that done, let's create a new game object. Um, we'll be importing a nice sprite later on, but uh, for now, let's just work with a simple quad. So I'm going to remove that uh, mesh collider. And let's also create another folder in which we can store some materials. So I'll create a new material, call this our player, and just assign it quickly. And I'm going to make this an unlit color, just pure white for the moment. And uh, now in our scripts, let's go into the player script. And I'm just going to zoom in so that you can see the text nice and big and uh, in our start method we're going to want to get a reference to our controller so let's create controller 2d and we can just call this controller and in start we'll say controller is equal to get component of the type controller 2d all right now whenever we just assume that our object has a certain component, it's good practice to actually make that a required component by just typing require component type of controller 2D. All right. And if we now go into our controller 2D script, um, we can say here at the top require component type of box collider 2D so that we know the sort of bounding area of our character. And we want to create a reference to this box collider, so we'll say box collider 2D, you can just call it collider. And in the start method, oops, we can say collider with a small c is equal to get component of type box collider 2D. And if we save and go back into Unity, we can just rename our quad to something more helpful like player. 
and I'm going to drag my player script onto it and you can see it automatically adds the controller 2D and the box collider 2D since those are required components and uh, also if we try to say for example remove the controller 2D script it will say you can't because the player script depends on it um, let's create a new layer called player and uh, assign that to our player object and let's also while we're at it assign the default player tag to this object and now let's go back into our controller 2D and um, we're going to do some setup work so the one thing we'd really like when we're doing all of our raycasts later on is to be able to easily get any of the corners of our box collider so um, we're going to create a little struct to store uh, these positions and we can call this something sensible like raycast origins and this is going to store a bunch of vector twos so let's say public vector two top left and top right and also public vector two bottom left and bottom right all right so now we want a reference to our raycast origins and we want a method a void for updating the raycast origins and in this method we want to get the bounds of our collider so you can create a new bounds uh, we can just call it bounds and that's equal to collider.bounds uh, collider with a small c collider.bounds and now we want to shrink those bounds so that on all sides it's inset by skin width as I was talking about earlier so uh, let's first of all create a constant float uh, the const keyword just meaning that we can't change this value once we've set it um, so we can set that equal to say 0 0.015 um, I have to give it a name of course <laughs> uh, skin width um, now we can say bounds dot expand and we want to expand it by the skin width multiplied by negative 2 so that it's actually shrunken in on all sides by skin width then we can say raycast origins and we can go through them all bottom left will be equal to a new vector 2 um, with the x coordinate being bounds dot min dot x and the y coordinate being bounds dot min dot y and I'm going to copy this four times so the bottom right will be equal to bounds dot max dot x and it remains bounds dot min dot y for the top left there will be bounds dot min dot x and bounds dot max dot y and finally for the top right that will be max for both of these so the next thing that we'll want to do is to create two public ints um, to define how many rays are being fired horizontally and vertically so the first one I'll call horizontal ray count and I'll just set that equal to 4 by default I'll just copy that and the next one we can call vertical ray count and uh, then we're also going to want to calculate the spacing between each horizontal and each vertical ray depending on how many we've chosen to fire um, as well as of course the size of the bounds so we'll create two floats uh, horizontal ray spacing and vertical ah, I can't type vertical ray spacing all right so now we'll create another void which we can call calculate ray spacing and in here we're once again going to want to get the bounds so I'll just copy that line of code rather those two lines of code and uh, next 
I want to make sure that horizontal ray count and vertical ray count are both greater than or equal to two, um, since when we're firing them, there needs to be one in each corner. Uh, so we can do this by saying horizontal ray count is equal to mathf.clamp, and we pass in the value we want to clamp, which is in this case horizontal ray count, and then the minimum value is going to be two, and I'm not going to set an upper bound, it can be as high as uh, you want to set it. So we'll just say int.max value. And I'll just copy that for the vertical ray count. Just paste that in there as well. So now that we are absolutely sure that we have at least two being fired in the horizontal and vertical directions, um, we now want to calculate the spacing between each ray. So in the case of the horizontal ray spacing, this is going to be equal to the, uh, the size of the bounds on the y-axis divided by the horizontal ray count minus 1. And this calculation seems to make sense because if, say, horizontal ray count was equal to 2, then we'd be dividing bounds.size.y by 1, meaning that the spacing in between our two rays would be the entire length of the uh, of the bounds dot y and that's pretty logical so uh, let's move on to the vertical ray spacing which is pretty much the same story so i'm just going to copy and paste that and say vertical ray spacing is equal to bounds dot size dot x divided by the vertical ray count minus one all right now just to test that this is all properly working let's create an update method and each frame, we will update our raycast origins, and we'll recalculate our ray spacing. And then we can have a little for loop for int i equal to zero, i less than vertical ray count i plus plus. And let's just uh, say debug.drawray. So we'll start from our raycast origins dot bottom left and uh, each iteration we will add vector two dot right multiplied by vertical ray spacing multiplied by our current iteration and then for the direction we can just say vector two dot up multiplied by say negative two and let's make the rays red. All right, so let's go into Unity and uh, press play. And as you can see, the rays seem to be working. They are fired from a uh, small inset of skin width inside of the bounds. And uh, we can move this around and the rays move with it. Um, let me just drag this out. We can even scale this and uh, the ray spacing is properly recalculated. And we can also, of course, change on the fly the amount of vertical rays that we have and it's being constrained to two as we set up. So uh, that all seems to be working very nicely. And uh, I'm going to end part one there, now that we've got all of the menial work out of the way. And uh, in episode two, we'll start with our collision detection. So until then, cheers. Oh, wait, you can download the source code if you want from the description. All right, bye.